in the shooting of the film, which wasn't a film, presumably when you started, when you picked up the camera, can you give us a sense of why you first picked up the camera? So when I started in 2011, I was just a student at Delhi University, and I was doing marketing, which is something totally different. I've never had the camera, I've never knew how to use it. So when the revolution started and I joined the protests, uh, I've felt as, uh, uh, as uh, other activists who joined the protest that this is something need to be documented. And before Syria, it was in Egypt, Libya, and Tunisia. So it was obvious that one of the main things for us to do as activists is to capture this moment. Mm -hmm. The regime denied all the protests. They were all the time saying that there's nothing happening. Mm -hmm. And you've seen like in your own eyes that the army is coming like to beat 50 peaceful protesters, for example. So it was a huge thing. So for us, like wasn't really like we want to do films and movies. It was the only way for us to stay alive and to save what's happening. And during these five years when I was shooting, like there was no plan at all of doing film. And I was just like, keep filming because this, this is the only thing I can do in that situation. And it really was for me like as a weapon and defend that I know that maybe I will not protect myself, but I'm sure that the story will be protected if I just like kept filming. Mm. And you were filming, and that's so powerful, the role of um, bearing witness and truth-telling. Um, but you were also filming the most beautiful moments uh, of life and um, realizing you were pregnant or uh, filming these very intimate things. And I wondered if, if your relationship to the camera changed over time. Like, at the beginning, when we just, like, the first time or year I pick up the camera, it was something like, I know this is important to do, but, like, with the time, I was, it really became, like, part of my body. All these th scenes you've seen, like, especially, for example, one of the scenes when I find out that I'm pregnant, I didn't, like, test and see that I'm pregnant, so I, oh, I will go to film this. Mm -hmm. I was trying to feel, have that feeling, like, the real one, as I'm knowing this, I was filming. Mm -hmm. So I've test, I put the test, you need to wait like five minutes to know what the result. So I went to my camera and I came to see in my camera. Like for me, it wasn't just like because I wanna save this moment, but because also I knew that at any second, this life could be ended. Mm -hmm. So for me to keep this feeling really as it was, mm -hmm. like, I know that maybe to, tomorrow I will not be alive, but the world outside need to see this in the true experience exactly. Mm. So I was trying, I feeling that I know when I filmed this, as it happened, it was real, saved, uh, like safe, mm. and whatever happened next, I have the real life of that. Mm. So then how did you two get to know each other and how did this become a film? So we were match made, basically, because no one knew that WAD had gathered this extraordinary archive until after the tragic events that you've seen finished. And she'd done some stuff with the news, came to London literally with 12 war-battered hard drives with all this material and plonked them down on the desk and said, look what I've done. And that was the moment when uh, people reached out to me, basically, to support her, to tell her story in the best way. Partly because I've made documentaries before, but mainly because I was so passionate about what happened in Syria. And from minute one, when the revolution had started, I was saying to people, we needed to make films about people like Wad and Hamza, who were just like us, who were honoring the spirit of like Martin Luther King and Gandhi in their peaceful protests, and being met with a level of state violence or barbarity that we hadn't seen since the Second World War. And I just felt from, we all had something at stake in how that was gonna play out. And so that's why they thought, I'd be a good collaborator to mm. work with WAD. And then we spent two years um, yeah. in deep discussion about the film. Now, the, the, particularly in, in independent filmmaking, which is, which is where I now am, the question of whose story is it? Who gets to tell the story? And um, how do you find the language for that? Is a, a, it's a very charged space. Um, 
Ed, this is not your story. It is now, but it wasn't when you started. I wondered how, if you didn't even know each other before you started, how did you build that relationship of trust and meaning in a language that isn't the language of the film or your language? I mean, it's fascinating to me. Like when we met at the first time, there was, we don't know if that collaboration will be like ended with good things or bad. But we both hoped that. So like I knew that I have this material and I have my life. And now I can't really stand to do this alone. Mm. And I don't have even the skills and the experience of doing like such huge project like this by myself. So I knew that I need support. And for him, like he wasn't there, but he has a lot of experience before. He's been to many different places like war zone before, mm -hmm. but not Syria, but for him, like I could imagine how it is. But then when we met and we went through the whole footage for the first time, we've, I was watching him, how his reaction to this. Mm -hmm. And for me, like in some places, I felt like I was a little bit surprised that he's not that like Western guys who doesn't know anything. <laughs> like, I really was like so worried about many different things, about how he will see this, how, what things he will be focused on, mm. is it will be like my, the things that it's really interest me mm. to tell, or just like the normally what we've, uh, sorry for this, but like for us it was, we knew that the Western country or the foreign people, they interest in some things, it's not the true story of us or what we wanna tell. Mm. So we had the first like, three, four months, which was so difficult mm. for him more than me. Mm. Because we were like trying to, okay, how I can't trust this guy? How I can't let him into my life? Mm. And I will say this, it was really hard for him because I make him suffer a lot <laughs> with many <laughs> exams <worth> <laughs> for him to pass. And really with like, I feel the first five months, then like we had a very great, chat, very honest conversation about everything, and I felt like he can be the one who you could trust. Although it took the, the, the five months to, to test him out, was there a moment when you thought, okay? Like, every time was like we going deeply with the story, I felt like, yeah, I can be more honest with him. I can be very, uh, like, open to him more. Mm. And in many places, I felt like, he was really giving me that space that, like, it's not my story, it's your story. Mm. And this is something was so worried me because usually the director or the person who, even if we both directors, but usually what happened, the man who, or because man, and also because he has experience, mm -hmm. he will like cover that. But what he was really trying to do, and I'm not saying that for him always, <laughs> <laughs> but now, like really, he was trying to like take my hand and push me forward, like to be me, not to be him. And I, I, what I've seen in the film at the end, I can't see Ed in the film. Mm. I can't see myself, mm. which is something really I really grateful for him that he gave me, like he helped me to tell my story more than he was like giving he, the people his perspective. Which is an incredible thing to pull off, Ed. What was the most? Um, challenging aspect of that for you? Um, I don't know, you know, from minute one, I, because I'm- be so, honest, it's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm always very honest. Um, from minute one, I felt like I knew about their story, like before I'd even seen any of Wad's archive. And I already felt that these were some of the most extraordinary human beings that I was aware of because of the work that she and her husband, Hamza, had done. And then when we sat together, I think, literally that first hour we sat together and she started showing me this extraordinary archive, I just suddenly felt this uh, overwhelming responsibility to mm. use every single ounce of my uh, ability and knowledge to support her, to do justice to her story and to what these guys had lived through and like to, to tell it right. Mm. And you know, in all of our debates, like one of the best things about our friendship and collaboration was we were so honest we would have stand-up rows for days sometimes <laughs> about points but I was always very clear I hope uh, that she always had the final word you know so like if we reached an impasse and if no one else could help it was her story and so mm -hmm. you know she had the final say and the only other thing I'd just add is like it isn't uh, my story at all, and it isn't any of your story, I don't think, unless there are some Syrians in the audience, but 
this story means something to all of us, especially at this moment, as you said. At this moment, with the world and the states it's in, like we can all draw so much inspiration, I think, from these amazing human beings and what they achieved, because they show us like the, the best things about human beings and our capacity to be better than we think we are mm -hmm. in the face of unbelievable darkness and brutality and hatred and violence. And that is why this film is important to everyone and it means something to everybody. Even if you're just trying to like get your local government to take better care of the homeless, you know, any struggle you're on, you're gonna have to go on a similar journey to these guys mm -hmm. and show the same courage and humanity. And that's why I think it's a, it's a story for us all. I had, a, d d not just in this film, but the, the conflict of being the audience member why am I watching this? Unless I'm going to do something to help, why am I watching this? Um, and I, it's it's a question I'm sure that you um, were wrestling with through the through the edit more than the filming. But um, you presumably need to make sure that things are not made too comfortable for us, so that um, so that we are made to think a different thought by being. Um, shocked uh, by what we see and brought into the realization of what you were seeing and all the people in those situations are seeing, but also these images that are circulating now as part of media and archive and they can desensitize us and we begin to think things are normal because we see them more often. Children who've died, people with limbs missing. How do you find the balance, what were the conversations you had about what you put in and what you left out? So one of the main things which is went through the whole two years was like how we can find that line between people stay and watch the truth as it is mm -hmm. or close as much as we can to what happened and same time like make people stay to the end of the process. I was with the side of how we can make the truth more than like really caring about the people. Mm. And it was on the side of how we can yeah, make the truth, but care about the people. Mm. And sorry for this, but like for me as a victim, I couldn't see the other side. Right. And with the time, with these two years, like I've tried to be like, yeah, I understand this side and I, and I understand this side. And we were like, just like bullying and pushing between these two until we did one test screening. Like, Country. Yeah, I mean, I would say like our, our issue, as Wad is saying, was not um, about the, the harshness of it. It was like, how do we not make it so overwhelming? Because we had a version where I think both of us had like lost our compass a bit. Because you should know like that what you've seen is so heartbreaking and shocking. But I would say it's, it's like a fraction of what she filmed. And it's definitely the gentler end, as it were, in terms of the level of violence and the horror of some of the images. You know, there was a lot, lot worse in there. And we, we had a screening where we just showed our friends and family, and they just literally, even the people who believed and cared so much about the film were just overwhelmed. They just started shutting down because it was too much. And so the challenge was much more about how can, you know, when you have these, like, gobsmacking, heartbreaking moments, can you just, like then bring people back to themselves and keep them with it. And I think, you know, in terms of why you're watching this, like I feel this film is like a, it's sort of, it's like a Guernica of our time, mm. you know? And it's like, you need to feel ashamed. You need to feel guilty. Mm. You need to feel angry. Because these, these are the emotions that we should feel and we should have felt when these events were happening, you know? And this is like what this film is about mm. and what people should be plugging into. Mm.